How's everybody doing? This is Shannon here, and we are going to do a little HVAC quick tip. Hopefully this won't take too awful long, uh, but the things we've got laid out here is our good old UEI temperature probe, giving us a room temperature of 69 degrees. And of course we've got our good old Amp Probe ACD 14 Pro, I think one of the best meters out there on the market. I have a couple of these. This is my spare that I'm keeping in the good old MB2 meter bag. And I don't use that one a lot. That's why it's so clean. <laughs> my other one's dirty and beat to death. So this sensor right here, as you can see with all this tangled up wire, is off of a Linux XP14. And for those of you who are not familiar with theirs, those and don't work on a lot of Linux, they are using the new demand defrost. It's not time and temperature like it used to be. It's not so simple where there's either an open or closed sensor mounted on that line. If you put your meter on continuity and she's open, you got no beep. If she's closed, you got a beep, plain and simple. These kind of take it to another level and we have little thermistors that are mounted on the lines. You've got one hanging in outdoor ambient air you've got one attached to a coil. And if you look up here, we have our chart that gives us our variant resistances based on different temperatures. This is actually from an old American Standard class that I went to years and years and years ago. Jim Hamilton gave that class, and that's one of the best classes I've ever been to. If Jim is listening or anybody knows Jim, Give him a shout out because he did a fantastic job, learned a lot that day, still have all the literature and apply it in the field. As of today, I was using this. So basically, these things are sensing different temperatures and the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance. So if you figure that you're out there on a normal day and you are at, let's say, 35 degrees, just above freezing, that ambient sensor should read around 29 on your meter. Now your coil sensor is always going to be lower, so you're going to have a higher resistance. And as you can see, the lower the temperature, the higher the resistance. All right, so in this situation, right here, we are sitting at about 70, 71 degrees in here. So when we take the temperatures of these things, they should match up with that chart and we should come up to about 11 or 12 on our meter. Now this is gonna be a little hard to do. I hope I can get on this with one hand. I might have to set the camera down. Give me just a second here. Bear with me guys, I'll be right back. And the laundry's done too. Got to clean those uniforms up, get ready for another week. All right, so there we go. Our good old amp probe is showing us that that ambient sensor is reading 11.58. And look at that, guys. That is no joke. Right there is 70 degrees, and that's 11.59. And we are 70 degrees. So I would say that outdoor ambient sensor is good. So my unit today was not coming out of defrost. When I got there, outdoor unit was not running. We were tripped on high head. I reset the board, turned the unit on, and pressure started running just normal. Nothing was wrong with it at all. I thought, man, what's going on with this thing? The pressures are fine. But then I decided to go ahead and put it in defrost because I have run into this before. And when you put that thing in defrost, it just stayed in defrost and it stayed in defrost and it stayed in defrost and it never did come out. Pressure started climbing up above, above 500 and that's when I pulled the disconnect. So now let's go ahead and get on those pins for this brown wire. The one right here wrapped in brown. That is our coil sensor and that is these two right down here. So give me just another second, let me get on there and we'll see what was wrong with this thing. I 
that's hard to get on there guys i'm sorry just bear with me i'm new at this filming too i'm not an expert like some you guys like steve lab and alex and all those guys shout out to them too all right so you got to trust me we're on those two and uh, i just lost it there there we go 90.5 all right, so so that's off the chart. We're 70 degrees in here, and we're at 90. So we're in negative temperatures. All right, so you wonder why that thing wouldn't kick out a defrost. That coil sensor was basically telling it, I'm froze all to hell, man. You need to thaw me out. So as far as that defrost board was concerned, that unit was froze solid, and it needed to keep running in defrost, and it did. Uh, but, you know, I was sitting at around, I don't know, like 38 degrees today. And that thing, the pressures just skyrocketed. So that's why it was tripping. The problem was the sensors. There was nothing wrong with the board. It initiated defrost just fine. Usually if those boards go into defrost, then you don't really have a problem with the board. Your problem on this one was definitely with the sensors, without a doubt. I replaced the sensors, put new ones on there, and the unit went in and out of defrost within, you know, under a minute. Didn't take long at all. Um, so that's just a quick little tip on some of the things that you can run into with this new style of defrost. There's quite a few places that you can find these charts. You know, they have a wide variation of... Uh, temperatures it goes down the negative it goes way up there but this is just a quick little chart that covers most of the temperatures you're going to run into out in the field uh, but it's just something that we need to be aware of you know defrost has changed and we need to change with it um, you cannot cut these sensors you cannot jump these sensors they are at a set resistance and that's that so if you get a zero on your meter then that of course means it's shorted if you were to get OL on your meter, then that means that it's open. But if you are way off of these values right here, uh, you know, it might vary just a little little bit. You know, you might have 10 or 12 instead of 11. But if you are way off, then something is wrong. And in this case, it was. So got me some new sensors on there. Customers running fine now. They're a happy camper. And I appreciate you guys watching the video, being patient with me. Sorry, I'm not an expert on this yet, but hopefully this might help some of you guys out. And props out again to the Amp Probe meter there. That's a great meter. If you don't have one, get one. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, thumbs up, comment below. Don't be too hard on me. Take it easy, guys. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.